Hey everyone, it's Jeremy Schwartz here of World Possible. It's been uh, quite some time since we've given you a good update on Rachel Plus. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that now. So uh, this is an introduction and tutorial on Rachel Plus. Rachel stands for a remote area community hotspot for education and learning. But what this device really does is provides a digital library of content to a community that lacks internet access. So we see these being used um, in rural schools around the world in about 41 countries, rural schools, rural libraries, um, rural community centers, as well as some places you might not expect, like prisons here in the United States, or health centers, or places where um, we want to provide a closed set of educational content uh, without the need for the internet. So everything we do is free of the internet, um, it can work anywhere in the world. It could work on a ship, in a plane, uh, anywhere you can take it. Uh, this is going to offer the people around it a library of content. So what it is is copies of content, which are stored here on the device, and then they're accessible through a tablet or laptop that will connect to this device. And this device emits a wireless signal, just like you're used to um, connecting to a wireless signal to get on the internet. When you connect to this wireless signal, you get access to the content that's stored on the device. Um, and that content looks a lot like the internet, so we get confusion about it. But what we've done is we've made copies of books, copies of movies, and actually made copies of websites. So um, when you think about the digital library of today, we can move beyond just books and movies to things like websites and interactive learning. Um, so we make copies of websites, and then there are also some groups that make specific software just for working in an offline environment, which will allow kids to have logins, watch videos on math or science or history, um, take exercises, progress through a full education spectrum based on the Khan Academy and other resources. So they can be, uh, in theory, working digitally in a remote community where no internet is needed, uh, but they have all of those resources at their fingertips. So I'm gonna go through real quick what this device is doing right now, as you can see, it's battery operated. Uh, the battery will last for about eight hours. It'll take about four and a half hours to charge. Uh, and what it does right now is it emits a wireless signal. So I'm going to be able to connect to this device with any tablet or laptop or even old desktop computer um, using the wireless connection. So I'm going to real quick on this computer actually go ahead and click my wireless here. And the name of the signal is Rachel. And so I'm going to connect to Rachel. And you can be doing this on any device you want. Uh, here I'm using just an old Lenovo laptop. A lot of people deploy Chromebooks uh, to build a lab around Rachel. Or they use things like the Amazon Kindle Fire, which is a rugged, low-cost tablet. Uh, or they find old desktops that have been lying around for years, and they either put wireless cards in those, uh, or they can actually use cable to network all of these things together. Uh, but there's a lot of different devices which can connect to Rachel. Up to 50 devices connect, connect to Rachel at once. Rachel's wireless signal stretches about 150 feet. So you can think of this much like you think of your home internet access, about the same type of range, um, and about the same number of devices can be accessing it at the same time, so about up to 50. Um, and so what you'll see here is I'm actually connected, and it says no internet, um, and open connections just means Rachel is not password protected. So what happens next is that you need to open your web browser, and we recommend you use Google Chrome. And when you open your web browser, you have to navigate um, instead of to, you know, bbc.com or cnn.com. There's actually an address on here. Uh, it's a series of numbers, and I'm going to type those in now. 192.168.88.1. And that's called an IP address. And what you'll see here is actually the uh, Rachel homepage. And this particular Rachel is going to Ethiopia, so we have some particular Ethiopian content. But each one of these modules here is actually a copy of a website, or a collection of books, or a collection of videos. Um, and we call each one of those things a module. So we have some particular content for particular countries, but um, in general we, we deliver with a general set of content that we think is most valuable for English, Spanish, or French speakers right now. Um, and just to briefly go through that, I'll take you through some of the content that's here on Rachel, as well as some of uh, the key features, which includes allowing users locally in the field to upload content. So if you're working in a community that has no internet, but the teacher goes to an internet cafe, 
downloads a couple YouTube videos, grabs a digital copy of the local textbook, um, she can come here and she can choose to view and upload content. And she'll have a password to get into this um, right up here. And we'll try not to give out some of those passwords as we go through the video here. But um, what this allows her to do is to create lessons by uploading content that she has collected locally, or he. Um, and part of that is building this library. And once she's built, or he's built the library, she can choose to allow students to have access to it. She can arrange content by classes. Uh, she can tag it to certain grades. And this is one key feature of Rachel, is the ability to people to upload their own content. The content that you upload from here is usually just movies, PDFs, Word documents, you know, lecture notes, the kind of thing a teacher might use to run a classroom. It's not full websites in this section here. Full websites I'm going to show you right now. Now coming back to Rachel, I'm going to briefly scan through and just tell you a little bit about each of these um, modules that we include on our default version, which is always growing. Um, it includes KA Lite, which is produced by the Foundation for Learning Equality. KA Lite is a special module because the students in KA Lite can create a login. Uh, and they would sign up here for a login. User Jeremy Schwartz. I'm not telling you my password. And I can create the user here. And so once I've uh, created a, a user, I can log in as that user. And I'm actually going to start to be presented with a full curriculum based on the Khan Academy in math, science, economics, arts, computing, test preparation for things like the SATs, um, and even some teacher training materials. And then I can choose which level of math I'm ready to work on. Let's just say pre-algebra. Um, and it's got this aligned here so that I know how to go through the curriculum appropriately. And then you'll see videos and exercises. This little play button is a video. This little pencil marker is an exercise. So I would watch the video once it pops up here. And these videos are usually three to seven minutes long. This one's about 10 minutes long. And as the video ends, and you can um, probably hear Sal Khan giving you the video here. This is a world famous resource. Um, I'm getting points for how long I've been watching the video. As I skip through the video, I didn't get as many points. And then I move on to the exercises. And the exercises will pop up. And again, I will start getting points based on uh, correctly performing the exercise. So move to eight. I'm going to get this answer wrong on purpose. You'll see I got the answer wrong. I have the ability to grab hints and move forward to actually getting the correct answer. And as I get the correct answer, I'm getting points. All the same while, the teacher is going to have access to a database of all of her students and see how they're doing, how much time they spent on the system, um, and how they're doing in the exercises. So that's, a, again, a second module here. We've talked about uploading your own content. We've talked about KA Lite. There's another um, learning management system called Moodle which allows you to build your own classes, which is very similar to um, KA Lite, except a lot of teachers have already built classes on Moodle. This is a very popular tool used in university settings around the world. Um, we have Wikipedia, which is the world's free online encyclopedia. So when you get this, you can go ahead and search for your country, where a lot of people have been excited to find information about their country, uh, do history reports. It's, it's a full encompassing encyclopedia. It's free, it's produced by people, embedded by people. Uh, but has a wonderful set of content that's available to you, uh, depending on any sort of subject. Um, in some cases, we find that Wikipedia has content that people find objectionable, whether it's because they don't agree with the country borders that have been written there, or there's uh, articles about inmates in a prison facility. Um, they choose to use something called Wikipedia for schools. And this is a hand-curated set of content, which is uh, just the most educational parts of Wikipedia. So. This is an option for you also. We have here WikiHow, uh, a practical guide to everyday tasks. So this is a really good basic setup of people submitting things about how to get rid of the smell of mold in front of a washing machine. Um, or I would try how to knit a sweater and see how that works here. So uh, how to steam press a sweater and knitting. And then I can, so I'm being able to search within this module. And I've got all sorts of opportunities here to learn how to knit. So this is WikiHow. Next we have um, GCF Learn Free, 
This is produced by the Goodwill Community Foundation. Um, it's most well known for teaching people how to use a computer, but it has lots of other great uh, life skills about how to use an ATM, build a budget, be safe online. Uh, I use Office 2010. Learning Office can be a skill that leads to a job in a lot of uh, the countries that we work in. So you would start here with the basics of getting started in Microsoft Word. It will teach you about the ribbon. It will teach you how to use the system. Um, but getting to know Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint is all within GCF Learn Free. Next, we move into our basic, what I would call travel section. It's just a world map and a wiki voyage. But the interactive world map is great. It doesn't go down to street level, so you're not going to be getting navigation. But um, you could search for your town, and you can start to get an idea of where in the world you actually are. So we have some deployments in Arusha, Tanzania. Um, I'll see if I can zoom in even a little more. But for a lot of folks who live in a rural community without internet access, this is the best map they've ever seen. And it really gives them a chance to think about where in the world they are relative to some of their neighbors and countries and even within their own country. So um, having this type of resource is really, really valuable. Uh, Wiki Voyage will let people kind of explore the world without actually going there. It's a little bit of a travel guide. Uh, we're here in Los Angeles, so I can search Los Angeles and get a real breakdown of the city, the neighborhoods, things to do, uh, what it might look like, the climate. You know, so this is kind of exciting if you're uh, in a village and you want to explore the world around you or if a visitor has come from a different town, they can look up their town here and start to tell people about where they come from. Uh, this is a fun package for people. TED Talks, Radio Lab, these two are more entertainment related, um, but these are inspirational audio casts or video casts. Um, TED, I think, is Technology, Entertainment, and Design Talks. Uh, and there's a great set of talks in here produced by African authors, produced by former inmates. So depending on you know, your actual deployment environment, there's going to be something in here to inspire kids, to get them to think about the world around them, to get them to think creatively about where they are. Um, in our society. So uh, there's thousands of talks here we have uh, on the, the Rachel system. Uh, Radio Lab is similarly a uh, podcast, so just audio of a similar, similar vein. The next set of Rachel is our textbook section. So we find in a lot of places getting an actual textbook is the hardest thing to do. They're expensive, they're heavy, they're tough to ship. Um, so what we have here is Sailor Academy, Boundless, and OpenStax, which are three college level resources for textbooks. Um, including kind of like AP level textbooks. I'm just going to check U.S. history. Um, and these textbooks have generally been vetted by, you know, well-respected authors and are used in school districts throughout the world. So uh, you can take pretty good care that these are uh, safe to use in a classroom environment. So we have kind of the more advanced textbooks. And then at CK12, which is our uh, friendly organization up in the Bay Area, we have more of the middle school and high school textbooks. Um, sometimes we even find that people just want to print these and they take a little while to download even though you're just downloading between Rachel and your tablet or your computer. Uh, but you can always save them to your device directly so you don't have to go through this little process here. But what you see is a full middle school textbook on sixth grade math. right? And they have thousands of textbooks. We've tried to pull out some of the most useful ones to include here on Rachel. And then if we want to get to earlier education, um, we leverage something called Core Knowledge Foundation, which is based on the United States Common Core, but it's free and open educational resources starting at preschool and going up to grade five. So um, you'll get in here, you've got language arts, you've got, uh, I think you've got some math skills, early civilizations. We've got some more, you'll see they're not yet available on the Rachel server. We continue to update this content uh, as frequently as we can. We're a small group, doesn't happen all the time, but uh, you can always talk to us if we need to have some more recent copies of websites. It takes us a couple weeks to put together a copy of a website, so we don't update them all that frequently, but that's a discussion for a later day. Uh, we also have some college credit courses. These are courses which uh, you can take what's called a CLEP exam. It's a college board, college level examination program. It's about $95 and will get you actual college credits, um, which transfer to about 1,600 universities in the United States. This uh, and, and these next couple of Oregon Youth Authority uh, vignettes are both college level courses, which we mostly use in the prison system in the United States. But if you are deploying in a refugee setting and someone might be coming to the United States, this would give them a real leg up in studying for some of these exams to build some college credits. Uh, 
Moving forward, we do a little more work where we have staff on the ground, we call them chapters, to collect actual local content. So in Tanzania, we have some uh, practice exams. In West Africa, we have the West African um, syllabus, where we find a lot of times teachers just don't know what they should be teaching. So it's uh, really nice for us to start collecting local content, which is what we find to be used most frequently in our deployments. Uh, the next two sets of content here are called Fantastic Phonics. These teach literacy. Uh, Fantastic Phonics for Adults teaches literacy for vocational programs, so you'll find it for healthcare or elderly care uh, or even the workplace. And then Fantastic Phonics for Kids will start all the way at uh, the, the word cat and the letter A. Uh, here with book one, Cat on the Mat, and there's you know usually a video that goes with these and some audio exercises that you can do to run a literacy lab. And so uh, this is teaching us how to teach teach the word cat and the letter A, um, and that will go all the way up through their series three, which is some of their more advanced uh, paragraph structure and things like that. And each of these has a teacher guide to go with the book. So uh, beyond that, we move into some of our more um, entertainment level reading. And that includes some of the great publishers, local language, uh, local authors, cat and dog books, mustard seed books, African story books, in OER Africa. These are all uh, very similarly books for young and early readers uh, put together for young uh, new readers in developing world settings, usually uh, young children. But you can find these in English, Spanish, and French in our system. And what they are is just very basic. You know, this is the first book in the series teaching you about the letters here and then some basic words that you can go through with the kids. Um, and then African Storybook Project is similarly producing content from local language authors. We have it in a bunch of different uh, dialects, including some of the English versions, uh, which is broken out by their level of reading. And it's really nice for kids to be able to see stories that make sense to them. For those of you who are watching this, you've probably been in a situation where a cow is crossed in front of you on the road. So having you know local context when we go to teach reading is an, a critically important piece of this. So. Uh, these are really, really nice resources to have available without the need for internet. We also have the Great Books of the World, which is um, everything in the United States uh, which used to have a copyright for which the copyright has expired. So if you were to look at the top 100, which helps sort it, Pride and Prejudice, Jane Eyre, Little Women, these are some of the classics that we learned as children, uh, which are now available free for anyone to use in part of Rachel. We move into some more subject-specific stuff. Um, PHAT is interactive science simulations, understanding algebra similar for algebra, math expression will help fill in the gaps where there's math help needed, algebra to go is a really great pre-algebra class um, donated by Saddleback University. It's uh, a really exciting professor who's got these class notes, video worksheets, video lectures, uh, homework sets and quizzes that you can go through, uh, but he has done these lectures designed to be watched online. Uh, really in a pretty exciting way as far as algebra can go. You see he's both characters here and he throws everything up on the board and it's really a nice set of content to be watching. Um, we're going to go a little further into some of this English content as we get down here. It gets a little more specialized. Uh, scale of the universe, robotics, peace building, you know, some things that we just try to make available as people have said that I want to use this type of content. Uh, and then finally we track into our health section which uh, Rachel in some instances is used just for healthcare, but Hesperian Health Guides, a full medical encyclopedia. Uh, so I could look up things like cholera if I knew how to appropriately spell it. We'll see if that works. Uh, yeah, cholera. So, you know, if I hear about a cholera outbreak, I can come here and I can see the symptoms. I can understand why it, it might be getting uh, spread throughout my community, things I can do to avoid it, outlook. You know, there's a, a lot of great resources here uh, on Medline, which is a, a very well internationally recognized resource. It's, it's something that you can trust. Uh, a little further, UNESCO has some early learner resources for capacity building in Africa. Um, Practical Action and InfoNet BioVision are two really, really great resources for rural communities who work in farming or subsistence farming and agriculture. Uh, there's a lot of great information here, all the way from livestock and what it's like to learn about arthritis in your cattle. Um, and you'll see this sometimes we have a few of these errors where we try to take this offline and a page will pop on top of a page. 
you know, we always try to make a, a backup option available here. So uh, depending on web browsers, each device has a different browser and a browser is like Internet Explorer or Chrome. Um, you're going to have different experiences with the content. We don't manage a lot of the content. We grab it from other people. So it's important to have a couple different browsers with you. Infonet BioVision uh, actually has Swahili podcasts as it relates to farming, uh, a whole bunch of other wonderful resources for East Africa. Um, the, the Organic Farmer is the name of the actual set of content that has the podcasts in here. You know, there's a whole bunch of great uh, resources here that are used to assisting with birth. You, know, you can imagine having these resources at your disposal where you can keep mortality rates down uh, when it comes to livestock is a pretty big idea. Moving through kind of the rest of this English, um, music theory will let kids play on a keyboard. Power typing is like made as beacon teaches typing, for those of you who remember that, but learning typing is a skill, and having that skill is, is the potential to get to a job. Um, MIT Scratch, and actually we also have now what's called Google's Blockly, uh, which I don't have exactly on this device, but I'll show you how to get actual, add, add that type of new content to your Rachel devices, uh, are coding resources. And then a little more Wiktionary is just your standard dictionary. So I could look up the word coding and understand what that meant. Uh, software code. Uh, we think you'd get a better definition here, but I think it's just asking me to find out what software is. And this is really purely just for uh, definitions of words. Uh, OLPC did a nice package of content for kids. And then one of my favorites is Toys from Trash. Uh, this is a pretty famous set of videos both in Hindi and in English uh, about toys that kids can make from the things that other people are throwing away. And a lot of these turn into uh, physics experiments or you know teach kids a little bit about engineering. Uh, but these are pretty famous videos uh, where you're both learning a concept while you're going about and building a toy that a kid can use. So they'll tell you what you need and they'll tell you how to build it. And at the end, there's usually a pretty cool toy that comes out of here, and I'm sure there is. Uh, then we're starting over all the way in Spanish and then in French. So the devices do have a limited amount of storage. Uh, generally, it's 500 gigabytes. But as you can see, that hosts a whole heck of a lot of content. So um, beyond that, we've talked about uploading your own content. The other concept that comes up is, can I create my own module? Uh, a module is one of these white boxes. And what you'll see here is actually that's been done. This group has created their own module of Ethiopian textbooks and Ethiopian videos. Uh, these technologies are based on HTML, CSS, PHP, and MySQL. So if you understand those technologies, you understand the basics of how to build an HTML web page, um, you can very easily build your own module. We are running the same server technologies on Rachel that most of the servers in the world run for all of the websites in the world. So uh, if you can build it on a normal website, you can build a, a version of it for Rachel pretty, pretty much regularly. If you have adaptive learning or things like that, you're going to have uh, too many resources for us. Now, managing Rachel is pretty cool. Um, when we go into our admin panel here, this is password protected for the person on site who's going to be managing your Rachel. You've got a whole bunch of great options here. Um, so if you have content that you don't want people to see or you want to rearrange the order in which content comes up, let's just say you want to focus on um, just fantastic phonics and you want all the kids to be doing that I can click this hide all and then I can come back down to fantastic phonics which is right here and I can make sure that that's not hidden and then I can save it so as an admin I'm doing this task but when I go back and a student is at the Rachel homepage this is all they're gonna see so you've got the ability to um, sort by English sort by Spanish sort by French show everything hide everything um, or do this basic, I want my local content up top, which is really one of the most used resources. So now that I've saved it, everything should be showing and the local content should be up top. And so when I refresh the page here, you'll see just that has happened. Now on the hardware tab, you'll be able to see how much uh, space is still available for more content. So first you have um, a small section of preloaded content, which is in the library. And by the library, I don't mean this whole thing. I mean this section here. Um, we can upload content on your behalf if you've got a selection of PDFs or videos that you want to be have loaded on a bunch of devices. Um, we would preload those. And that's why there's this small section of preloaded uh, three gigabytes. 
Then there's the rest of that area where the teacher can upload her own content up to 16 gigabytes. And then there's the remaining portion, about 440 gigabytes. Um, we use most of that for Rachel's content. And that's all these modules that you've seen. But what you see is this uh, still has 38 gigabytes of free space. Uh, and I'll show you what we can do with that extra, extra space. You can also turn off the Wi-Fi. Um, we find in some prison environments they want to use this just through a wired network. And so you would plug Rachel into a router and computers into the same router, and they can talk to each other that way. And then you could just turn off the Wi-Fi. Uh, and then there's also the ability to shut down or restart the device here. So the next thing we're going to get into um, is a little bit about updates. And we always get asked this question, how do I update the device? There are six ways to update the device. I'm going to talk to you about one of them. But I want to caveat the whole conversation by saying it's very rare that these devices get updated. Uh, as an example of why, we, we have a deployment in Sierra Leone, and they just asked us for Microsoft Encarta because, because they said that Microsoft Encarta is the most used encyclopedia in Sierra Leone. Well, Microsoft Encarta stopped being made in 2009. So to give you an idea of how up-to-date these resources need to be, it's not up-to-date. You know, we, are, we have Wikipedia, which by now is a far better resource than Encarta, but people aren't looking for the most up-to-date encyclopedia, and they're not looking for the most up-to-date textbook. If you look at our textbooks and compare them, you know, they're all, they're all within the last couple of years. If you compare them to what's available in a village or a community center, I promise you we're going to have newer material, and it doesn't need to be updated every year. It just doesn't. Um, that being said, you can come in here, and you can view the version of each one of your sets of content, and you can check for updates. Now, in order to do that, this device needs to be plugged in from this side here. Oh, I lost the jack. This is an Ethernet jack, and it needs to get plugged in directly to the Internet. So this means plugging it into a router. Now, most of you are never going to do this. Most of these devices end up hours and hours away from Internet access. So it's not going to happen, but some of them do end up in places where there is regular Internet access, whether you're in a refugee camp and there's Internet in the administrator buildings, or you're in a prison and you can update these things. Um, you can check for updates here, and right now it can't connect because I'm not plugged in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug Rachel in so I can go through this process of showing you what that's like. So let me pause this. Okay, so I am back in uh, my Internet zone, and so what I've grabbed here is what's called an Ethernet cable, and I'm going to plug one end into Rachel, and now I need to plug the other end into the Internet. So my Internet is uh, in another room in this cabinet here, and I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So now my device uh, is plugged into the internet. So when I go ahead and actually um, try this process again, I've got to give it a minute to uh, refresh. Now when I check for updates, it's up to date and because now this device is online. And then I can go through it and I can choose each module that needs an update. So this um, Blockly Games has been updated. It was version 0 0.1. And this ES means it's the Spanish version. I can click version 1.0 and it's actually going to go ahead and update that set of content. And so I'll let this progress through here. So you can choose if you need um, content to be updated or not. This is a package we're working on right now, so you can ignore that. Uh, same thing. This is the Ethiopian videos and books package. Uh, and then at the bottom you can choose to update all modules. Keep in mind as you update this, this is using a lot of data. You're downloading entire copies of websites. So if you're in an area with limited connectivity, uh, really think about what you need to update before you go ahead and go finish this process. The next tab here is the install tab. And so I've mentioned a few um, sets of content that could be added to Rachel but are not yet there. Um, these include all of this content here. So these are modules which we've made but don't necessarily ship with Rachel. I mean, some of it is just because it's specialized, some of it is because we produce a bunch of Rachels and then we add content later. Um, so I wanted to have Blockly Games in English, as I mentioned that coding resource from Google earlier. Um, what I would do here is just click the download button and and then if you ignore these two packages, which I am, here, I'll just clear that and clear that, you'll see Blockly Games is getting added. And when it's done getting added, it's automatically going to add itself to the Rachel homepage. So 
Uh, if you think about internet speeds, this is about 24 kilobytes per second, which because I'm uh, flooding my network, that's a pretty normal speed to have overseas. Thankfully, Blockly Games is a small package that I'm adding here. Um, but whenever there's updates or new content, if you plug your Rachel into the internet, you'll be able to see it here. And we sort all of this content English first with the EN prefix, Spanish with the ES, French with the FR, Arabic with the AR, Portuguese, PT, German, DE, Hindi. Uh, this was a Indian dialect. I'm not exactly remembering what it was at the moment. And same with BO. But, uh, you know, limited contents in languages that aren't kind of our core coding language here. Uh, so that's finished. If I go back to the Rachel homepage and I refresh, I should see that here that Blocky Games has been added. And so uh, I can go through and I can go through the uh, coding exercises on Blockly Games now. So that's how you would add new content. If you want to make a module, please get in touch with us. We host all of our modules at the website http forward slash forward slash oer the number two go dot org so if you're online and you want to look through the modules they're all here and um, you can actually look at them and get a preview of what those are are before you load it on your rachel so this is an online preview of all the uh, rachel content that's available here at oer to go dot org um, the last thing i want to go through Stats, we get asked this question all the time. So keep in mind that Khan Academy Lite keeps per user stats on how much time they've spent watching Khan Academy videos and doing Khan Academy exercises. In general, this stats page is what's called AW Stats. This is an open source Google Analytics provider, if you will. Um, some of the key things here is to look at how much bandwidth is being used. When you think it paying per megabyte or paying per gigabyte, uh, in a lot of these countries, you'll come here and you can find that you've used a few hundred gigabytes worth of content just between Rachel and your students' devices, um, and you can start to quantify the savings that you have here. You can also start to see which pages are being accessed the most, what time of day they're being accessed, so you can start to get an idea of which classrooms are actually using it. Um, and if you want, you can start to arrange devices to have their own IP address, so you could have a tablet which is always assigned to one student. And then you could see, hey, you know, this, this IP address really translates to a student. This is how much bandwidth they've used. This is how many pages they visited. This is how many websites they've hit. Um, and again, bandwidth is just between the Rachel device and the client or the tablet. So there is no internet anywhere in here. Um, the last piece of this is your, your basic kind of settings just to change the password. And uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and, and log out. So now that I've logged out, another thing uh, worth drawing your attention to is that there's you know, a battery, a nice battery monitor. Um, and then there's also, you have two IP addresses up here. So because uh, when I connected in the beginning via Wi-Fi, this was the address I entered, 192.168.88.1. Now, if I connected this device to a router, which I've done here at my house in order to get on the internet, uh, it gets its own IP address from the router. So now, if I didn't want to use Wi-Fi at all, or I wanted to just have this as part of my existing network, I would connect to my existing network, and I now have this address here. So instead of entering the 192.168.88.1, I enter 192.168.1.52, which I think we all saw was what's called the LAN IP address. And so when I enter that, it's just another way to access Rachel without using Rachel's Wi-Fi. So if you've turned off Rachel's Wi-Fi and you have your own router or your own network set up, um, you would want to install it over this, which is called a LAN. So if you have a desktop computer, which is wired into a network and doesn't have Wi-Fi, uh, this is how you would, you would access Rachel that way. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to tell you guys about Rachel. Let me jump back to my list in the desk and check back in. Okay, of course, I, I didn't remember to talk about this, but it's everyone's first question. What does it cost? Rachel has no recurring cost whatsoever. Once you bought a Rachel, you get its content and content updates for free forever. And we're a nonprofit organization focused on getting this in your hands and getting uh, this in the hands of students who need it. So it has a one-time hardware cost, which uh, is $499. Beyond that, you're just looking at your regular power costs. The unit comes with a 90-day warranty which means after 90 days, uh, we don't support them anymore. And a lot of that is not really true. I mean, we're, we're always here to stick with you guys. We do the best that we can. 
but we can't warranty the hardware once it's gone overseas and it's been there for six months and who knows what's happened to it. So it comes with a 90 day warranty. We also sell or offer two and three year uh, product replacement warranties, which means we will replace the unit once if something happens to it during that period of time. And this is actually something that happens quite a bit. Uh, we, we give you one chance to replace it. It's $129 for that warranty and it usually gets replaced with the most up-to-date version of Rachel. So the hardware changes, the software gets new, you will lose all of your data, but you will get a new up-to-date with the newest content and the newest speeds and hardware and things like that. Uh, if there's anything else, I'm going to have to add a, another video. At this point, I'm uh, going to sign off. Hopefully, you've had a great tutorial and introduction to Rachel. Um, please, please do communicate with us via our forums, which you can find a link to at the, the top of the page here called Community Forums. I understand a lot of people like to just have a phone call. Um, it's pretty hard for us to have all these phone calls. So if you've watched this video and you post in the forum and you don't get a response, feel free to give us a call. But we are doing the best that we can to reach out to people on the forums so that those questions aren't lost. You know, we end up answering the same question many, many times and it, it distracts from our ability to build you guys a great product. So um, as much as we can, we try to push all of that support online. We have chapters around the world, currently um, in Guatemala, Namibia, Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, Tanzania is starting, Ghana is starting, and the United States Department of Corrections has a chapter also. So if you're working in any of those places, plug into our forums and we'll make sure you get connected to our teams on the ground who can provide teacher training, technical support, um, and in some cases, actual hardware on the ground also. But uh, what we're really trying to do is build a tool that teachers can use in the classroom, a set of resources that help kids explore, learn, think creatively, you know, challenge ideas. It, it's not designed to be this pure curriculum, uh, but really designed to be a resource for a teacher. And our chapters around the world are really good about teaching teachers how to use this resource. So um, they usually charge about $300 per day to go out and do teacher training. And we'll even do full projects for you if you have a school which you want to get a set of Chromebooks or a set of laptops, a Rachel device and teacher training, um, we're more than happy to run those projects for you if you're uh, sponsoring them in a country in which we have a presence. So please keep in touch with us. We love to hear how this is being used. We love to hear your feedback. And more than anything, we love to get good content back. So if you work with the Ministry of Education or another NGO and they have wonderful content that's being used on the ground, please feed it back to us so we can feed it out to this community uh, it really is a sneaker net and we rely on each other to build wonderful, wonderful sets to help people do um, or to reach their full potential. So please, please uh, be in touch with us. We hope you have a wonderful experience with Rachel and we look forward to helping you along the way.